Welcome back to the Weekend Warrior Show Recap Podcast. I'm Ty from the Unemployed Architects. This week I'm going to be talking about the shows I had last weekend. Friday I was at the Neon Bison in Peoria. And Saturday I played at Tabapalooza. So, the Neon Bison, this is the second time I've played there. It was great the first time. It was the I had my first show back after COVID last time. And... You know, I just felt like my voice was like really, really in the pocket and sounded nice and felt good. And uh, this time was not the same. <laughs> it was, uh, I think my voice was a little overtired from the last weekend, honestly. Uh, it, it was like, uh, I kind of took a few days off of practicing because, you know, I sang for seven hours the Sunday before and it was, I was definitely feeling it. And, Though I don't think it sounded bad on Friday. It just, like, wasn't as easy to control as it normally is. So that that was a little bit of a bummer. But the main thing was it was just dead. I mean, it was, like, beyond dead. And I don't really know. It just seemed like the whole down... Not to pass the buck too <laughs> too much. Because I, I really don't think... I mean, I didn't bring anybody there. You know, I kind of on me a little bit. I'm not saying that it's not my fault to an extent that nobody showed up, but it did seem like the whole uh, downtown was pretty dead. Like I, I had to park kind of far away and uh, I kind of had a good shot of the buildings and the, like, and I went out in the middle of the street because there were no cars and I took a picture of the, of kind of some of the, the buildings in downtown Peoria and you know, it wasn't, well, it wasn't scary because there were no cars coming. <laughs> Um, but, uh, everybody that was there, I mean, I got good feedback from the crowd that was there and I got a lot of people that were pretty interested in like who I was and get, getting stickers and magnets and seemed genu genuinely, you know, kind of impressed by what I was doing. But, and I mean, I tried to play to those people. I ended up playing a couple new songs, which... Uh, I was pretty excited about it. sounded pretty good. So good that I'm going to probably start adding those to my regular set. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a bummer that wasn't very busy. Um, I think that even some of the people in the crowd were just like the owners, you know. It wasn't, it w w wasn't a, a packed house by any means. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I already have another show book there in December. Maybe it's late November. I think it's December. And uh, I know I have another show booked there at some point in time. So, you know, sometimes if you have a bad show like that, it'll be hard to get. Even if it's just like happenstance or like, uh, you know, just 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 by chance, just the stars aligned to a point where, you know, it was a combination of you not bringing anybody and the town being a little dead. There was a lot of music going on in Bloomington. There was uh, the the... Uh, Make Music Normal Festival, and then there was the Black Dirt Revival Festival, and um, Wilco actually played at that, which is pretty crazy. Um, put on by The Castle and by Ed Anderson from Backyard Tire Fire. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, there, there was a lot of stuff going on in, in Bloomington, which, to be honest, I was a little bummed about, you know, not really being asked to do the Make Music Normal festival, but, you know, just got to roll with the punches, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I, why, why I was, you know, I, I it's not that I was excluded. I just wasn't thought of, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think that that's at least the mentality I'm trying to take with that. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple years ago, I mean, I, I played at a, the first one of those before Morgan was even booking it and everything. And then she had booked me, I think, a couple years in a row doing it. And uh, I think her rationale was, you know, she's trying to get some fresh bands in there. But, you know, it's still something I would like to be a part of or at least asked to do. But anyway, that's a whole different story. Um, it's fine. I had shows. It was good. I got more money than I would have made at the at the Make Music Normal Festival. It's just a cool event. That, but uh, anyway, so, you know, a good performance. Played some new songs that were 
you know, I've had written for a long time, but just never really been able to quite crack live. Like one of them, I just, I've been missing this bridge part. Like I've had it written for over a year, but <laughs> I haven't been able to, I was just missing something and I couldn't, couldn't really figure out what it was for a long time. And then I kind of had the idea of what it was, but I couldn't really make it work as well as I would like. Or it was really just I didn't have the lyrics in the in the bridge part quite sussed out. And it's just one little verse, but, you know, I, I put that off for so long to finish it that, um, you know, I almost forgot about the song. That's it's a good tune, I think. Uh, it's fun, and it's, like, real upbeat. Uh, it's called Syrup. And uh, I I've, I've played it on, like, a TikTok video that I released on Instagram, like, probably over a year ago. And I just hadn't hadn't been able to quite put the final touches. The other one, I've actually had even a scratch track in the studio, uh, kind of a rough cut draft, because that was going to be next on the docket of songs to record. And uh, I ended up and I wrote Good Friends right after that and uh that's kind of the the way i leaned i think i think good friends is maybe a it's not better it's just different and i feel like it fits with what i was going for a little bit more than the other song the other one's really upbeat too and it's that's why it was so hard hard it's hard to play it live especially standing up because it's like um, it's a lot of just like straight, it's really just quarter notes, but they're fast and doing those on the foot drums is hard. And then when I would play it acoustic, it was kind of the way I play it is hard to keep the tempo like decent, um, which is just, you know, my shortcomings as a musician ultimately. But, um, I, I played that on Friday night and, uh, it felt good, you know, sitting down and playing it and, you know, I didn't, didn't there was no new part to it so it was just like it just felt more fluid and more uh completed and like i had more of an idea of what i was going for with it and i played those actually because they're both in the key of c major which as musicians probably know is the hardest key to play <laughs> to play it. no um but uh you know simple simple straightforward songs and I, I hadn't been able to figure them out for a while so it was cool just to rock them out back to back and then to go well you know it was also a a kind of pleasant surprise um and it, it was fun but uh it's, it's nice to maybe have I, th I think those will be included in most of the sets i play from now on because you know they are upbeat they are fun songs so uh so that i think one i'm calling the light and the other one is Syrup, as I had mentioned. So be on the lookout for those tunes if you come and see me live. And then uh, Saturday played at Tabapalooza. Tabapalooza has been an event that I've done for four, maybe maybe even five years. I don't even, I, I've lost track at this point. Music Festival, uh, this was the first year that they've done really three days. They did like a Friday night little campfire session the full day of shows on saturday and then sunday they did music till 5 p.m so pretty cool to see it kind of build from the ground up and the tabs have always been so nice uh and complimentary and genuinely just good people and uh, jenny tab is actually a really good singer herself so that's you know she'll come up and sing a couple songs with me once in a while which is always a blast um and you know it's just they're super supportive about what I do and about what a lot of people do. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't really express the appreciation of that enough because that, that's, you know, for someone like me, that's such a gift. Anytime they're in the audience, like it just, it's like a weight off my shoulders really because I don't have to, those are a few people I don't really have to win over. They're already into it, you know. I, we we have this other person named Susan who's the exact same way. It's just like when there, there's certain people that when they're in the crowd when you're playing, it just uh, you know they're on your team. They're rooting for you. They want you to. They want you. They want to put you in the zone. So 
by put them putting you in the zone, it gets them in the zone even more. <laughs> it's, it's like a symbiotic relationship, and it's it's it just makes performing that much better, and makes you perform that much better. But anyway, so that was Saturday. Uh, I got there pretty early, and they had a super nice like main stage set up. And they have like a side stage, which wasn't real popping. And we, me and Dave did this last year where, you know, there was a, a band playing before us on the main stage. And we had, you know, we could have waited till they were done and then tried to get all our gear on stage and plug everything in. Probably would have taken at least a half hour, if not, you know, longer. And uh, they, they have really fancy PA gear. They have like an iPad uh, mixing console type thing. And... Uh, pretty complicated which I'm not real proficient with using that stuff and uh you know I kind of have the way I'm used to doing everything all analog and as simple as possible at this point and uh so what we decided to do last year was we'll just set up all our gear while that band before us is playing so that way when they're done we can just get right to it and uh so I had that same kind of mentality this year and I got there three bands before we before I even played, and it was just me this year, and uh, it was uh, you know I set everything up, I made it look cool, got had like a cool light set up, and then you know it kind of kept wearing out. I was supposed to play at 10 p.m., which is pretty late, even anyway, because like you know the people that are there have been listening to music all day, and they have like a lot of tents and campers and whatnot, so. Um, I feel like, you know, by the 10 p.m., some of the older crowd is, like, ready to call it a night, almost. But uh, at least that's how it's been, in the, especially if we play on that main stage, because the main stage is pretty loud. It pushes people back anyway, you know, so they're not, like, right up front. And, uh, but anyway, so there was this band that, won I mean, I, th I think that they had some issues earlier in the day, so it, like, pushed everything back. And the band that was before me didn't go on until about, I was, <laughs> till probably around 10. Um, and they played for a solid hour, maybe a little bit more. Maybe it was like 9.45 to 11, um, which was, you know, I was already set up. And I actually played a few songs while they were setting up. But, uh, you know, I just did a couple new covers. It wasn't like I was really, like, invested in it. I was just kind of doing a sound check, essentially. Um, and, you know trying to do songs that were, that I like a lot, that hopefully people would be into, um, sticking around for, but, uh, you know, it gets to be 11, 11, 15 when I actually sit down to play. There's probably only like 20, 30 people really, you know, into it. And, uh, it, it was, it was still fun. I mean, I, I always have a blast over there and I, did almost exclusively original. I mean, I played like a couple covers, like I did Superstition, and I did um, a lot of Beatles tunes. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I did. I just wanted to see how it would go playing mostly originals. I probably played an hour and a half set straight through, and you know, I I played till people were tired of me, which <laughs> I have a problem with. I think um, you know, if I'm on stage, especially that late you know so I, I've talked to people before one, one of my buddies is like you should always leave them wanting more you know play play your best stuff and then call it a little early and uh that was not the case that's not what it's <laughs> not how I roll I guess uh I, I just felt so in the zone that night I don't know how did how else to describe it I just fe felt like I was you know just on, like my voice sounded good, I felt really comfortable, my, my, my foot drums kept acting up, so I'm trying kind of a new, because my pedal for my cajon, the thing I sit on that sounds like the kick drum, um, is this like weird spring-loaded thing, it's not, it's not a traditional kick pedal, so, um, it kept getting caught, and then I wasn't getting any like, momentum behind it, so I, I was having to like really stomp it. And I've had issue with that before, but um, never as bad. So this this next weekend of shows, I think I'm going to try an actual kick pedal and see how that goes. Of course, it'll probably throw my game off a little bit, but 
you know, in the long run, I think it'll be better because I won't have to worry about it getting caught funny. And then, because when that happens in the middle of the song, it's like, that's all I'm focused on is trying to get that back up and running or like, how can I compensate to make it, should, should probably just stop the kick drum. And, <laughs> but it feels so anticlimactic if I go from starting a song with foot percussion to ending it without but uh, yeah, so I mean, the show I had a lot of fun playing, and I think the crowd was digging the originals a lot. Like they kept requesting specific songs, which you know doesn't happen a whole lot to me. Yeah, I had I had a couple people that were there last year that had been obviously listening to the Spotify enough to know um, what to what to ask for, and then you know played a lot of those new songs I was talking about, and it was fun. And uh, I always enjoy hanging out with the tabs afterwards, kind of just hanging out. And, you know, they're kind of tearing stuff down. I'm tearing stuff down. And it was just a good night. And uh, then a long drive home. <laughs> I didn't get back to like three or something. But, uh, yeah, so those were the shows. Tabapalooza is always a blast. Neon Bison was a little bit... Uh, not as good as the first time, but it was still, it was still, uh, I feel like I performed well, uh, even though I had to focus a little extra hard to get there, but, uh, and then, so I've probably gonna, after I get off the, the mic here, I'm gonna release, uh, Lo, Ryan, Wolf, and my EP on, onto the CD, baby, and then that'll put it on every streamable site pretty much so be on the lookout for that if you're listening to this uh and uh that should be a couple weeks maybe tops from now that'll be and we'll have a music video for it as well maybe a couple and uh that's that's kind of the new thing and then we're in the studio on tuesday so i'll probably be talking a little bit about that uh next time so as I always say, I appreciate anybody who takes the time to listen, and I appreciate anybody always who comes out and watches, who streams the music. Got the show in Pontiac at the Cellar on Friday, which uh, it's sounding like a lot of people aren't going to be there that usually have had been. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but, you know, maybe there'll be a whole new crowd I can... can uh, can coax into liking what I do, and then Saturday, uh, it'll be Gibson City at Jay's place, so I haven't played there in a while, so, uh, that'll be an interesting one, so that's kind of the stuff coming up, thanks again, and I'll talk to you next time.